Okay, this is the third and last time I'm going to be trying this because I tried it twice on Google's thing on their website to do it, record it and upload it straight away, and it didn't work twice, and it's annoyed me. So this is a this is my pickups video. Um, you'll recall about a month or two ago I bought this an original gatefold. He's falling apart. An original gatefold Atari cartridge from 1977. Um, so this is what 37 years old. Yeah, 37 years old. When I was 10, this came out. And beautiful artwork on these Atari cartridges. Beautiful cartridge. Um, and I wanted to collect all of this original set of cartridges that had these numbers on the side that came out at the same time as the console. And I know Carl's talked, uh, Carl Woodland 37's talked about um, the dangers of getting addicted to uh, collecting games. And he's now moved on to emulation. I do a lot of emulation of these old games just to see what if my rose-tinted glasses are making them seem better than they were. Um, but I wanted to get this collection because when, when I originally had it, it, um, it had a little advertisement in with it with a stack of cartridges. And like a they make like a rainbow color. And I, I remember saying at 10 years old, 11 years old, if I had all those cartridges, I'd be happy forever. I wouldn't want another Christmas present. And so I'm kind of giving myself that Christmas present to 10-year-old me. I'm getting myself all the cartridges that I wanted, that whole rainbow-coloured stack of Atari cartridges. Um, so this was the first one that I got. Then at a local game store, I came across, again, a numbered cartridge, Indy 500. Now, this actually came originally in a big box with two controllers. The paddles on the Atari uh, were limited. They'd go around this far and go around this far and no further. For a car game, you need to be able to go around and round and round. So this came with these special driving controllers. And this, obviously, somebody's uh, liberated it from... Focus. Focus on me. Focus! Camera. Okay, so this originally came in a bigger box with the paddles. I found the box on eBay and bid for it, and uh, I missed out narrowly, and it was annoying because it would have been perfect. I could have dropped this box into it as well. But this only cost me $4.99. Oops, $4.99. So I'm very happy with it. Um, so that was my second purchase. Third purchase, eBay, Breakout. Again, these are all between about 5 and $10.00. Maybe $15 including delivery. No, 5 and $10 including delivery. Boxed with instructions. Perfect condition box. For games that are getting on for 40, 35, 40 year old, these are in great condition. These are real collector's items. Um, I bought a collection of four next um, because it was cheap. It was like $10 for four of them including deliver, delivery. Uh, I got Combat again. But this one's the one, normally the game, Combat was packed in. For some reason, they obviously released it as a separate cartridge as well, but it's rare to find it in a box. Even rarer still to find it in its original Gatefold box. You can see the difference of these two boxes. Um, this is much prettier, it's shinier. The picture goes off behind the word combat. Just, But it's nice to have both of them. And unusual, everybody says there's tons of combat. You don't need combat. But having combat in a box, that's a different kettle of fish. Next, uh, Championship Soccer. This is a special edition one, as you can see from the bottom there. That means it had been, it's a reprint, basically, of it. And not only is it a reprint, but they stuck a sticker on it because they got sponsorship for it. Because at the time, soccer was starting to take off again in the late 70s. But they brought Pelle in, like, kind of like the way they brought in uh, David Beckham. They brought Pelle in, in his old age, um, to try and boost people coming to the games. So the later box is still in this, actually said Pele's Championship Soccer. So this is quite a neat box to have, even though it's not an original, it's a special edition. It's neat to have with that sticker on. Complete, with instructions, very happy with that. In this pack of four games, this one's got some, some of these have, um, some of these written on them in Sharpie, which is a bit annoying. But Video Chess, again, a special edition. Again, look at this artwork on these games. Look at the 1970s uh, football players. It's just, it's awesome stuff. Um, again, in with that set, one that Carl would really like, uh, Woodland 37, basketball, but this is really basic, it's nothing like your, uh, whatever the hell it is, you're playing NCAA 2014 type games. Um, great game, well known this game, well known because it was the first time an, uh, a black video game character, you call it African American, here you say African American, but... Um, you know, uh, politically correct, it's like, it's skin tone, it's brown, it, they're just another human being, but, um, but that game actually had a player that was 
brown skin tone. So really cool. Um, the next one I've just shown it. Not, not as good as Carl at this. Um, so for Atari programmers, they weren't getting recognized, so they left and formed their own company. And um, I, I decided uh, this bug has gripped me, and I decided I wanted their games, a particular set of their games. And then I thought, I'll just get all of their games because there's so few of them. And then I saw, uh, th this one is the rarest, River Raid. Um, it's the rarest, I mean, it's boxed, it's in beautiful condition. It's the rarest because, and you can see a picture of the screenshot of the game there. And it's rare because it was written by a woman, conceived and designed by Carol Shaw. So very collectible, very first, very popular, definitely well known to be programmed by a woman video game. Then I came across an advert on eBay for, an advert on eBay, is it an advert, an auction on eBay for a stack of Activision carriers for $130 for 15 of them with $20 delivery, that's $150 for 15 of them, that's $10 each, it means I don't have to faff about, I don't have to make sure they all get delivered, I don't have to deal with anything. So I got them, and of course I got River Raid again. <laughs> Pristine condition again though, this game is just going to go up and up and up and up in value, so I have no problems with that whatsoever. Fishing Derby, kind of a crappy game, and it's also what I call a sash game. So it was not the original one, it's a follow-up. It's got this black sash on it. Um, the original wouldn't have had that, and it would have had bigger writing, and it wouldn't have had the description in the bottom corner. But still, it'll hold a place in my collection until I get the actual original game. And this is still worth a lot of money. A lot of people don't know that there's the two versions. I might even keep the two versions, who knows. There you can see an original again, no sash. Big writing at the bottom, ice hockey, great game. Activision were really good at coaxing great games out of the Atari. Um, again, another original. Freeway, their version of Frogger. Um, I'm going to lean over to the side here and talk at the same time, even though you don't want to see my double chin. Um, great little game, great for kids. Kids really enjoy because it it's very simple. Um, Barnstorming, fly over the windmills and through the barns and avoid the birds. That's basically everything in one picture. They, they, Activision actually changed the colour on a line-by-line -line basis. Atari games were very bland in colour until Activision came along and worked out that they could do that kind of really neat trick. Um, skiing, again, a sash game, but still great game, skiing. Loved that game. Great memories of playing it with my brother, who's no longer with us. Um, Kaboom, a paddle game. Original sticker in the corner, a bit sad, but it's fine. Beautiful again. These boxes are generally in very, very good condition. Mega Mania, which I think is there, is they copied a game by Imagine Play the Game, which is a Liverpool based software house writing games for the Commodore 64 and the uh, Spectrum. They called it Megalomania, and I think Activision pretty much just copied it. Or maybe it was the other way around. I'm going to have to check that out. What year is this one? Oh, I can't be bothered looking. I'll look later and I'll tell you. Chopper Command, which was their version of um, Defender. Great game. Checkers, which obviously Atari did chess, so they filled in the space again. A sash game. Never played this one. Probably, I mean, it's Checkers. Stampede, which is like Ride Along and Lasso the Cows, Big and Little Cows. Boxing, loved this game. T torn Box, unfortunately. Sash Box as well, so I'm not that bothered. I'll eventually get the original, original. Tennis, Atari did a tennis called Real Tennis. Wasn't as good as this tennis. This tennis was the best. But again, it's a sash game. But a great tennis again. Activision doing their best stuff. Dragster, really dull game. Really stupid game. But it fills out the collection, I suppose. It's all in there. Sash game again. Dr Laser Blast, fantastic game. Remember playing this game with my friend, another Carl, in England. And um, to play it while listening to Black Sabbath. Which I wasn't into, but I enjoyed listening to Black Sabbath while I was playing a space game. A lot of fun. Um, now, again, the Activision games. Is this upside down on your side? Yeah, I'll turn it around this way. Again, the Activision games, when they stack up, they're all rainbow coloured. So I can either put them in with the Atari ones, but I won't. I'll probably put them on their own. Um, but a great, great little game collection. I ordered another game off eBay 
looked in great condition. Um, after Activision, other companies got involved in trying to make games for the Atari. Most of them were really dreadful, but some of them were pretty good. Um, and this particular one was really good. I ordered it off eBay. When it came, it didn't look as good as it looked on eBay. I complained to them. I looked at their shop and discovered they had two of them. And the one they'd sent me was the other one with no instructions and a crushed box. So this is the one they sent me. So as you can see, the box is a little crushed. And a really neat mechanism they had inside of these boxes. You just slide it out and the cartridge is there. A bit like... Um, I'm just trying to think. Were NES games like that? Or was it, no, it was VHS videos in America were like that. So I complained and they sent me the original, the replacement, the better condition version. This is in beautiful condition, really beautiful condition. It has the instructions in with it, which are in beautiful condition. It's a great little game, this as well. And, and by this time, 1982, the independent companies were actually putting pictures on the backs of the boxes. It's a bit kind of like Phoenix. It was a great game to play, a great looking game. Fantastic game to play. The only negative I've had doing all of this was somebody posted one with a box and then sent me just the cartridge. And it's a late cartridge. You can tell the late cartridge because they have pictures on instead of just text and instructions for what numbers the games were. So you could reset the Atari and select the game that you wanted. Um, so a bit disappointing, but you know we all live and learn. Live and learn. Before I move on to that one, I haven't got an actual Atari yet, so I can't play any of these games or test them or anything, but I don't care. I bought a Flashback 4, uh, which is the emulated console with, it's got uh, infrared joysticks. I don't know how well they work when there's two people playing. Wired paddles. Uh, it's got a set of limited edition posters and a copy of the original patent signed by Nolan Bushnell. I doubt very much it is actually signed by Nolan Bushnell. I'd love to meet Nolan Bushnell, but uh, it's still pretty cool. It says it's got Space Invaders included. It's because it's an emulator. It's actually an emulator of a, a version of arcade Space Invaders. It doesn't actually look like the Atari version, but um, and they've actually simplified it for modern gamers. You can actually shoot more than one missile at a time because I guess kids didn't like it. Um, and as Carl said, this uh, this uh, video game collecting can get quite addictive, which is the correct way to say it. Addicting, as our American friends say. Um, addictive for goodness sake um obviously we were meant to collect berries and things over the winter and so we have this inbuilt wiring to collect things and if you're not careful it can get out of hand um i'm trying to keep it under control i'm doing just the activision just the atari first set with the numbers on and then the games that i really really loved and i'm going to put them all on a shelf and that's going to be that but I also wanted to collect the cartridges from the very first video game system that I played, which was the Fairchild Channel F. This is a fairly easily available game because it was a math game, so it's not very popular. I don't know whether it was very popular. I mean, it's one of the first six, so a lot of people have it. They got it just to have another cartridge. But uh, my next-door neighbour had one of these in, I don't know, in 1976. I was 10 years old. Um, so this is a really old 38-year-old video game cartridge. But I'm very happy to have it. And that's about it for now. I've ordered some more. There's some more coming. I'll probably end up getting an Atari, probably a Heavy 6, which is the heavy version with the, a lot of uh, radio frequency filtering on it to pass the FCC's testing, uh, the 1970, original 1976-77 model. I might even get the 77 model, which was released at the same time as Star Wars, which had a black front instead of a woody front, and they call it the Vader. Um, I might get both of them. Who knows if I can get it boxed. But people are charging a lot of money for them now, as they do for a lot of this old stuff. But this is all I'm going to collect. I'm not interested in collecting anything else. Uh, I like doing everything else in emulation anyway. Um, but that's it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll try and make the next one, um, I don't know, more interesting, I guess. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But hopefully that was somewhat interesting. So take care of yourselves and bye-bye for now.